Hey everybody, Reef Girl here, and welcome to my channel. I'm showing you the site of the very first Reefapalooza to be held in Chicago. Being within realistic driving distance, we decided to go. So I got to go to my very first Reefapalooza. The bonus was that I arranged to meet up with Pat Murphy, Murphy's Aquatics, a fellow YouTuber. Being a multi-day event, I really had no plans to buy coral because I didn't know how I was going to keep it and then drive home with it. But Pat had a great idea. I'll start by showing you how it's all put together and then I'll show you what I did with it. First, a one gallon glass jar. The shape of this jar does matter. Some kind of a lid for the jar. A power bar. A small heater. This one was 50 watts. Some kind of an air pump. Pat brought a Tom Aqualifter. He's king of the Aqualifters. <laughs> This is the bracket to hang the aqualifter, about three to four feet of airline tubing, some sort of a check valve or air stone. Check valve is good because it prevents any possibility of a siphon, and the ultimate DIY custom fit frag rack for the bottom of the jar. And we can't forget the blue carbon reefing temperature monitoring system. Both RODI water and a couple of gallons of pre-mixed salt water. So here's how it all goes together. First up is the heater. It's important that it has suction cups. That gets plugged into the power bar. Next up is the custom fit frag rack. It needs to go in now before any other equipment gets added. And now for the air pump. The Tom Aqualifter is unique in that it can pull and push air as well as liquids. I don't know of any other pump that does this. The air tubing with the check valve or air stone will go inside the jar and needs to be installed so that it pushes air out. There are arrows on the aqualifter that show you the direction of the airflow. This bracket also has little places to secure the hose, which is important in such a small space with such short lengths. Then we put the intake hose on and it can just lay anywhere it happens to fall. So there you go. When you add the salt water, leave it down far enough to allow for some displacement. Pat also brought along a sharpie to mark the water level and monitor evaporation. Okay, everybody ready? All right. Now, you'll notice something right away, and that's the vibration. If you don't want people complaining from six floors down that they can hear this vibrating noise and then have the hotel room police knocking on your door, you're going to want to dampen that vibration. So a couple of towels underneath will solve that problem and they also serve to catch any overflow of water. You sure don't want to get water all over hotel furniture because you might end up having to pay for it. Okay, that's a bit better. If you're still getting a little bit of noise from the vibration of the air pump or the aqualifter against the jar, just take a washcloth and tuck it underneath and that should help dampen that vibration. Using a lid combined with the shape of the jar will reduce evaporation and has the bonus of also reducing salt spray. And check out the flow. All of this created just with air. And last but not least, the thermometer goes in opposite the heater. Make sure you turn it so you can read the temperature from outside the glass. Now let's go back in time to Reefapalooza and see what occurred. We went out for dinner with these great guys. There's Pat on the left, myself, my husband, and that's Blue Carbon Reefing John on the right. We had a great time. So not only did Pat have all the fixins for the pop-up frag hotel, John bought a thermometer during the day and gave it to me. I'll show you what else they brought me. It was fabulous. Pat brought me pieces from his own tank, including this octospawn and some very sentimental pieces from Dave's tank. And I was overwhelmed to receive these. John brought a beautiful stellata. Here's what they look like in the pop-up frag hotel. This setup worked really, really well. 
The water was clear, there was tons of flow and oxygen, and there was a desk light that I turned on just so I could see what was going on inside here. It was awesome. This was Saturday night. Sunday morning, it still looked great. The water was clear, though there was a bit of debris floating around, so I'd suggest adding carbon. Bring that along if you plan to do this setup. I bought some at the show and Pat also brought some because we had no filter. So Carbon did a great job dealing with whatever toxins were put out by the corals sliming up from their change in environment. And Sunday afternoon, almost 24 hours after putting this thing together, things were still looking really good. Well, the pop-up frag tank is a little more full now. It is eight more zoanthids full. Yeah. Plus some fireworks clove polyps. So thanks to the generosity of Pat Murphy, Murphy's Aquatics, and John Smith, Blue Carbon Reefing, I got some gorgeous stuff. And I was able to keep it alive. And I was able to buy other stuff that I didn't know I could get and bring home. So it was all good. So thanks Pat and John. I'll put channel links in the description to Murphy's Aquatics and Blue Carbon Reefing. So please go and check out their channels. You'll find lots of interesting stuff there. Finally, here is the ingenious DIY Murphy's Pop-Up Frag Hotel Kit with temperature monitoring by Blue Carbon Reefing all put away, clean and ready for the next time I'm going to a show where I might need to keep coral alive for a couple of days. Thanks for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. Mm -hmm.